Hey everyone, on today's episode, I'm gonna do a TIG welding demo on how to weld a crazy gap. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. Thank you so much for tuning in today with me. This one is gonna be a lot of fun. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up, welcome back. I appreciate you as always. To anybody that's new to the channel, what's up? Welcome. All right, I got the idea from today's episode and I got a couple messages from a, pe from a few people who wanted me to help them get set up with how to weld a gap that was kind of sick. So I mocked up this piece here and this is what we're gonna weld today. So I have mocked up this piece of square tube. I have mocked up three different gaps. This first one is kind of a moderate average gap that you'll see with a lot of setup with plate and butt welding. Uh, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna simulate that one first. The second one here is more of a, something I call a pretty bad gap. It's something that you definitely would probably not be stoked on to come across your table. You have to deal with something like this. This is 3 16ths of an inch thick. And then this third one, I always like to refer to as the who the f tacked this up for me gap. Uh, so this is one obviously is not very common from what you see, but I wanted to just give it a whirl today. I have them. Very strong feeling. I'm gonna make an absolute mess of this, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. I'm gonna show you a couple little tricks I might do to help get this under control so you actually can throw something across it that looks half decent, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, but anyway, we're gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna issue a challenge today. I'm gonna to start something that's kind of funny. I'm gonna issue the same challenge to, let me think of someone good, Max from Fifth Street Fab. What's up, Max? Max is a buddy of mine. I love that dude. His YouTube channel is awesome. It's right there on screen. I'm also gonna put it in the description below. This dude's awesome. So Max, if you're keen, man, I recommend giving this one a try. Again, like I said, this first one's about 332nd of an inch, 332 of an inch. This guy's 316 of an inch, and this guy's about 3 8 uh, or so. I'll put it on screen right now, whatever it is. But two gaps are moderate, one gap is gnarly. So Max, if you're down, Give it a whirl, man, I wanna see this. And then after you're done it, you gotta pass it on to someone else, that's the rule. <laughs> so I'm starting it, you saw it on my channel here. But anyway, let's go over machine setup real quick, uh, and then we'll get down to it, we're gonna give this one a whirl. I have a feeling this is gonna be a mess, but it's all good, we're having fun here today. Okay, as always, today I'm gonna to be using the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. This machine is sick, I love it, it's so simple. Uh, seriously, check the description below. I have a full review of this machine and this thing is just so simple, it's beautiful, I love it. I use it for pretty much all my videos here now just because it's always set up and always ready to rock. For settings, basically pretty simple. We're running alternating current AC for aluminum. I'm set up about 160, let's bunk it down a little bit. I don't think we're gonna need much heat to do what we're doing today. Um, no down slope, post flow is about six seconds, that's fine. Balance is running about 30% positive. Frequency about 100 hertz. Five, a half a second of preflow. No upslope. 150 amps, let's do it. And again, I'm using the foot pedal. So even though I have 150 amps on the panel, I'm gonna be dictating it with the foot pedal here. So again, 150 amps should be about ballpark or what we wanna do. We'll control it a little bit better and a little bit more in detail with the foot pedal here. Okay, so for a torch setup here, what I've got is a 332, it's a 2% lanthanated tungsten. I like these guys, they seem to work pretty well with the inverter type machines I have here. Just a standard gas screen type setup uh, with a wedge collet on the inside. So again, it's 332, 2% lanthanated tungsten. Lately I've been digging number six cups, but today I only have a number eight, it's a Furic cup. These cups are pretty nice, I like them, so it'll definitely do for today's demo. Make sure everything's on nice and tight. There we go, all right, that's the torch setup. First one up here. So one of the main things we're gonna have to contend with is distortion. We need to worry about these two edges staying even right here. So I'm gonna put a tack right in the middle and that should probably give us a good indication of how it's gonna feel when we arc on with the actual pass. So let's start with a little tack here. We'll go from there. Okay, so we got a tack here. So we're gonna run the bead from here to here. We're gonna see how it goes. I think this one's gonna be okay. For some reason, this one just feels okay while I'm tacking it up. So we're just gonna send it, see how it goes. Okay, so we're getting nice and comfy here. Let's go.
Ooh, okay, first pass done. Let's get ready and finish the second half of this one. Okay, so let's run it to the end here. We'll try and settle up nicely with this next tack. There we go. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look too bad. Let's stop and take a look here real quick. Okay, so there you go. It doesn't look too great. It's a little bit all over the place. Overall, things stayed relatively clean. I did see a bit of contaminant that was coming out of the weld joint because I cut this with a zip disc. I tried to clean all the contaminant out I could. However, evidently, there's still a little bit in there. But overall, everything wetted nicely. Uh, the consistency of the weld was not too bad. This part here kind of sucks where I had to restart, but that's okay. That's kind of going over a big lumpy tack is kind of you're bound to deal with something like that. The rest of it, not too bad. So everything turned out a little bit lumpy, a little bit either way. I'm not terribly happy with it, but overall consistency is pretty good. Uh, you can see we dipped out a little bit here as things were starting to heat up. And uh, obviously the gap is warping as I'm welding, which is a little bit of a problem, but it's all good. Everything wetted all right, consistency was okay. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do the middle pass now. We're gonna see how far we get and what happens here. I have no idea, but here we go. Okay, not going too bad actually. Definitely not looking that great. Kind of looks like crap, but uh, overall, I think everything is bridging pretty well. Uh, I'm definitely feeding more to one side, curling the fill around a little bit. So I'm gonna finish it off and uh, we'll let it cool down and go from there. Boom, okay, let's take a look at it, see how she went. Okay, there's pass two there, not too bad actually. I gotta say that one kind of felt a little more comfortable than the first pa the first gap we did. So overall, I think I found like a good equilibrium towards the end there, uh, where I was adding a decent amount of fill. I definitely don't like how when you're starting to weld bigger gaps, what you tend to notice is your wetted edges look a little bit, a little bit dicey. Like you can see this edge here, it's not an actual flaw. If you were to grind it down, you would see it is wetted but it just doesn't blend as nice as it usually does. If, when you tend to get a big gap, sometimes your blending is not always as consistent, obviously because you're dealing with a lot of stuff all at once, but anyway, it's wetted here. Overall, pretty wetted. The shape of the bead is pretty consistent, which is good. So my tie-in looked a little, de little bit better on this one because I didn't have a tack to deal with. So there we go. So there's the second gap. All right, we're almost there. Woo. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna set up, I have no idea how this is gonna go, or I might have to end up doing a bit of a weave. I'm not totally sure yet, but we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. All right, everyone, buckle your seatbelts.
Holy smokes. All right, let's take a look at that. That's ridiculous. All right, that looks like absolute crap. <laughs> Whatever. That's a big gap. That is really, really challenging. That absolutely looks like crap. As you can see, I've basically tried to stick with a bit of a weave pattern there. Uh, the weave is helping me out simply because I can start on one side, kind of back off slightly to let it solidify, and then I walk over to the other side, reapply some heat, get another dab, and then have to actually re-dab in the middle just to fill everything back up, then let off the heat, walk back to the other side, and repeat the process. So it's it's an absolute zoo. This thing sucks, but uh, we are getting it done here. That was halfway. That was like a four minute weld right there, but whatever. We're gonna finish it off because I started and we're almost there. This is a super challenge. So. so let's get ready and finish the second half here. Okay, so here we go. We are gonna weld the home stretch of this crazy gap and then we're gonna go have a drink after. <laughs> but here we go. Hold on to your butts. Booyah! That was dope. Let's take a look at it. Okay, just like the first half, this one looks like total crap. Here we go, but <laughs> that was a uh, warping a little bit uh, as I went, but overall, I think it definitely, yeah, obviously I filled it. <laughs> filled it with a bunch of dog shit, <laughs> but it, but it worked, we got it done. What we can see here is basically, like I said before, everything is wetted on the edges, not well, doesn't look very good. Hanging out for as long as I did and getting some semblance of a puddle shape, even though this thing was red hot as I was going, uh, I don't know, I, I'll laugh this one off as just being ri too ridiculous to make look good. <laughs> but you can see the other ones look absolutely amazing now compared to this one. <laughs> But quite frankly, this one just straight across the board sucked. The third pass of the three passes was just total dog crap. Um, but anyway, we filled it up, we made it work. So overall, I guess I am somewhat happy with it. So although I would not trust it in any kind of structural sense at all. So it worked out, I got it done. So again, this one was just for fun. You see me do a lot of really, or at least what I consider to be high-end TIG welding stuff on this channel, where we go over perfect settings, perfect setup. Uh, for artwork, I have a perfect scenario for doing a piece of artwork. Everything's clean, everything's super ideal as far as welding uh, goes. But I think with this one, definitely was a challenge because the settings can only do so much. Gas flow can only do so much. What I have limited at this shop here could only do so much to help me. Um, probably like the best way to do this would be to throw a backing bar behind there, a piece of stainless steel or copper or something like that. They basically, you could just bonk out of there after you finish, uh, finish your weld. It'll help you form a little bit more of a bridge in between, but we went raw dog on this one. We just went for it. We totally sent it. Um, and I don't know, I gotta say, even though it looks absolutely terrible, <laughs> and it's me telling you that it looks terrible. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the first two gaps we did don't look too bad at all. They definitely don't look great. The third one looks like an absolute dumpster fire compared to the first two, but we got it done. This one was fun, people. I love doing fun stuff on my channel. I'm all about positivity and goofing around with TIG welding. Max, if you accept my challenge, uh, I'll... <laughs> Man, good luck. <laughs> this one sucked. To everybody watching, I appreciate you watching so much. So if you appreciate what you see here today, hit the subscribe button, like the video if you're down with it. Um, spread some positivity in the world. Do something nice for a stranger. It's a challenge I actually issue to everybody at the end of every episode. Just do, some, just do something nice for someone. The world needs as much positivity as it can get right now. So do your part in the name of what you saw here today to spread some positivity. But again, really, really appreciate you watching today. This one was a ton of fun. Uh, who knows? Who knows what challenges we'll get up to next? Someone actually challenged me one time to do a weld using my feet. Um, 
I don't, I don't even know how that would work. Would I use a foot pedal with my hand? If you have a challenge that you want to see, uh, leave it in the comments below. Um, hit me up on Instagram. There's my Instagram handle right there. Uh, you can say what's up. Hit me up through direct message on there. Check out my website, pacificartigwelding.com. I got a blog on there. That's where I do have all the information on my online training program. I teach people how to TIG weld by distance. So if you're interested in learning how to TIG weld, hit me up on there through email. I'll get back to you. We'll start a conversation. We'll see if you're a good fit for the program. We'll go from there. But to everybody who watched all the way to the end, Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I genuinely, genuinely mean that. I hope everyone's doing well out there. We'll talk soon. Peace.